Greetings and thank you for tuning into the series. Today we're going to be working on a um, soft pastel or and or chalk pastel. Some people call them chalk pastels. Um, some people call them soft pastels. Um, but anyway, it's they're basically the same thing. And before we get started, <coughs> I wanted to. Um, go over some of the materials and stuff that we're going to be using in pastel paintings. First and foremost, let me say I'm not a very I'm not very good at doing soft pastels. Um, and I don't do them, I don't attempt to do them very often. Occasionally I do. Um, I had just recently uploaded some pictures to a website called pmp-r.com it's also known as paint my picture and uh, this is the reference photo that I've posted on there and I'm going to be working with today um, I'll put a link down below in the description for you to see if you want to go and scope some of my pictures out <laughs> So far I've only uploaded about five images. I just discovered it the other day and I just got started with it. So I don't have very many images on there as of yet. But um, anywho, um, before we get started I want to discuss the materials that we're going to be using. I have a couple here of, they're called bl blending tortillions or blending stomps. Um, these are, they come in various different sizes, but I just got these two because I figured that I probably won't need anything larger than that. Um, these are good for areas that you cannot blend with your fingers. Um, I've seen some people blend soft pastels. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies are still bothering me really bad today. Um, but I've seen people blend soft pastels together with uh, using their fingers which is what I usually do and I use these for small areas where I can't get in with my finger also I use this tool here they call it a paint eraser it's um, just a rubber um, it's just got rubber ends on it and one is a uh, chiseled chiseled edge which I use the most when I use this I use it to make uh, fine line blending if you will yes and the other end is of course just a tip that is rounded off on the end and it's made into a uh, cone shape and you might you may see me using that in this this particular uh, series of paintings I'm not sure of course you have masking tape I as I said before in uh, one of my other series that I've been working on on YouTube doing wool pastel paintings I tend not to mask off my paper unless I'm doing watercolors and uh, but sometimes when I do soft soft pastel paintings, I or drawings rather, I try to I sometimes take the paper down, and as you can see, I've already done that. And this particular paper is um, Kansas and Meetons paper. That it's uh, it's a gray toned. I decided I was going to use that. That's what I have. Um, what I have left out of the pad. The, my pad is kind of getting low, <laughs> if you will. But um, another tool that uh, I use in making soft pastel paintings is I have, I'm not sure if you can see this in the video or not, but I have a homemade um, bridge. That's what I call it, is a bridge. And I take this and I lay this down over my pastel painting 
get rid of that. Um, <clears throat> and I lay this down over my pastel painting and it allows me to rest my hand uh, above the paper and where, in which case I don't make, if I've got a lot of pastel down already and I'm making like fine details, I can put my hand down on this and use this as a brace to uh, go over the paper with and I've seen uh, artists use similar items um, but this is basically made out of uh, dowel rod that you can get in any arts and crafts store and I've taken and gone in and cut out some cardboard and glued them to the bottom side of it so it's kind of smooth as a smooth surface in case I have to you know lay it on the area some area of the painting but anyway that's another uh, tool that I've made I basically just cut it up with a saw hand saw and then drill the ends together with uh, wood screws and um, that's pretty much uh, all the materials that I use for uh, working with soft pastels apart from paper towels uh, these are I got these at, I don't know where I got these but these are very cheap pas cheap paper towels they don't tear worth flip <laughs> They're very thin and they tear along the bottoms real easily. But anyway, uh, you'll want to have a. If you blend with your fingers, you don't wear gloves. I've seen some people wear gloves. Um, and then I've, some, I've actually seen people use paper towel, blend with paper towels before. Um, I've done that, I think, a time or two. But like I said, I've not made a whole lot of pastel paintings and I'm planning to do so in the future starting with this one um, and another deal that I have is workable fixative this is made by Prylon which is you know if they make aerosol paints and whatnot you're probably familiar with the brand Krylon but this is a basic you can buy this pretty much anywhere that sells paint um, you can get it arts and craft stores art supply stores um, anyway this this particular fixative I use it sometimes um, I get carried away with it and it's workable fixative and you're supposed to um, whenever you create a base layer of pastel you're supposed to go in and spray this down spray a coating one or two light coats of it on it to uh, kind of lock it into place if you will and then that allows you to go in and build up more layers over the top of it and sometimes I try to put down uh, a layer and I, I use this sometimes in between layers um, but anyway that's what that's for it's just a fixative that it holds the pastel it's supposed to hold the pastel together on onto the paper um, as far as pastels go I have a set of Rembrandt um, this particular set has uh, 15 full sticks and 30 half sticks and as you can see I've already gone in and um, well you can't see I haven't opened above but, uh, <laughs> I've already used these some in the past like I said I've, made, I've attempted to make a few paintings with them but it has a color chart on the uh, side of the carton here I don't know if this camera is focusing on it or not but um, it has a color reference chart on the side of the on the side of the uh, cover there and just like with the Van Gogh oil pastels they're numbered um, so I will 
I don't have no way of knowing what the color is. I think the the full sticks have the the color written on the side of them, but um, the half sticks are just they don't have a protective casing, and I've used those most because I don't like. I, don't, I generally don't make pastel pictures any bigger than 9 by 12 which is what I'm working on here. Um, also, I have another additional set of pastels that I use. <clears throat> I have four of these because I've got I've bought two sets. Um, and these were not very expensive. These are more like student gray, if you will. Whereas the Rembrandt brand is the more of the professional gray. And I can tell the difference when I use these because these are have these have a little bit more binder in them. And it's sometimes whenever you work with them, they 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 tend to. Um, Every once in a while you'll have a piece of the hard binder you'll come across and it'll leave a hard mark on your paper, your surface. And it's sometimes hard to work around. But um, as you can see, let me, let me get one of these out. As you can see, I've taken this, I bought two sets because one set I have for just basic, a basic square, a whole piece that are used for large applications um, but then I've taken a set an additional set <clears throat> excuse me I've taken an additional set and kind of filed the edge one edge one corner down or one no, end of it down to make a kind of a point and that is good for making smaller detail work and um, you can see it's already coming off on my hands. It's, it's a very messy medium. Um, but also, for doing detail work, I have uh, pastel pencils. And I take those and I utilize these for making small details. Um, also, I go in and use that, um, I use the pencils to make the outline sketches with, and I try to make the colors match up with what I'm wanting to use, so that um, whenever I make the initial outline sketch, I kind of go over the edges of it, and then um, I kind of go in and once I get a base layer down and to work with I usually go <coughs> cover up those marks so um, but anyway that's the um, that is the materials that's I covers all the materials that I use when I'm making uh, pastel drawings